Uh, Svenja, let's come to you first with the, uh, the, the politics in mind here. We've got the House of Lords then voting. We don't know really, do we, whether this is something that could delay the Prime Minister's timetable. It is just her and her government's timetable, isn't it? It's not set in stone. Absolutely. It's a self-imposed deadline. However, it would look very bad if she, if she missed that. There is no suggestion at the moment that she won't be able to trigger Article 50 by the end of March. What could happen, and we won't find this out for a couple of weeks until the Lords vote on any proposed amendments that they may put forward, it could delay it by a few days, it could sort of make for some awkward debates in the Lords and some awkward headlines, but so far so good, they're on schedule, we're still expecting Article 50 to be triggered by the end of March, somewhere mid-March possibly. Mm. When you look at the timetable here then, Rob, when you look at uh, the UK economy, a lot of your thinking must be dependent on when we actually see the triggering of Article 50 and then what happens thereafter. Are you, are, are you also just waiting to see what the House of Lords decides to do? You generally think the uh, government will be able to meet, meet their timetable? Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming it's triggered by the end of March. I think the, the talk now is of 9th, 10th of March around a council summit. Um, I think that makes sense given the fact that the Commons passed this with no amendments, but clearly we've got to watch what the Lords does. I mean, it's very, very hard to predict, uh, but I, I think that makes sense as a base case. And I think this is a, a really important moment, not the actual triggering of Article 50 necessarily, because we all expect that to happen, but what happens after that when EU leaders uh, respond to Prime Minister May's uh, request? Because if she got the deal that was outlined in her speech, I mean, that would be a good deal. The UK would get most of the stuff it wants and ditch most of the stuff it doesn't want. Uh, I think the EU leaders' response to this and where negotiations go over the next few months will be pretty important both for the economy and markets. Mm. And we continue to get those signals from the EU that you can't pick and choose, you can't cherry pick. Uh, that seems to be the mantra they're working off. And in fact, there's been very little change in the in the the, uh, the message coming through from the other side, the other 27, if you like, during this period of limbo because they're just waiting for the uh, negotiations to be triggered, aren't they, Svenja? Absolutely. And I think one of the dangers here is how literal is this message? I think the government position for now has been, oh, it's an opening gambit, it's a starting stance for negotiations. But from what we're hearing from officials in Germany, Merkel generally does and means what she says. So it'll be very interesting to see how that translates on the you know, at the negotiating table and how far Theresa May is going to have to compromise on this ideal deal outline that she set out. Yeah, are they both playing poker here, or is, or are they, uh, have, do they have, have they adopted slightly different styles?